Hello, my name is Curtis Hundley. I'm the Chief of Party for the Cambodia Micro, Small, Medium Enterprise Project, Cambodia MSME. The project's been going from 2005 and it ends in July of 2012. It's a very unique project in that we work with enterprises to improve their competitiveness from almost zero to where they're subsistence to market uh, linked, where they're selling thousands of dollars to the market. When they uh, have a uh, commercial excess and they start selling to the market, they start running into business problems. So we work with advocacy and political space so um, they can advocate for better laws and regulations among themselves and among with the government. And we also have a component, a business environment component. And that's where we work with the government so that they can draft better laws and regulations that they can communicate with the private sector and understand how businesses run and why they need better laws and business friendly regulations and how to better enforce those regulations, enforce those regulations on the, with the private sector. We work in nine su supply chains, nine value chains, pigs, fish, clay tile, rice, honey, resin, water, sanitation, and garments. We work in 17 of uh, 23 provinces in Cambodia. We have about 260,000 beneficiaries. We have been extremely successful at integrating uh, the supply chains from the market floor to the local village input supplier. We provide no direct technical assistance. All the technical assistance is provided through the private sector, usually by input suppliers who have a, a vested interest in growing enterprises. And the enterprises we're talking about are family businesses, 99.9% are micro enterprises. Um, that extra one tenth of a percent is uh, small businesses like tile companies who employ 50 to 100 people. Cambodia, w when we started in 2005, was very broken. Uh, relationships were very weak. The market links were very fragile or non existent. Hardly anybody was in the commercial business, only those firms around Phnom Penh. And most, most of the goods came from Thailand or Vietnam through imports. There wasn't much production. When they started hitting these uh, business issues of putting their products on the streets and the, the government guys would ask for unofficial fees and lots of taxes and licenses and uh, made it very difficult to sell, they started uh, coming together on their own to advocate for better rules and regulations. We helped facilitate that once they were ready to come together. We also worked with the government and tried to explain what a good law was and how to write good regulations. And then gradually we invited the private sector and the government together to meetings in very um, fun activities and non-threatening ways so that they could learn the business of the private sector and the private sector could learn why laws and regulations were important and they could discuss the issues that they needed to discuss. When I'm talking about fun and, and interesting activities, there were cross-provincial trips where we put people on a bus, we'd take them to another province, they'd spend two days together, they get to know each other. We'd take them on an international trip to Thailand or Vietnam where they would be locked together for a week and they wouldn't talk to each other at all when they started, but by the time they were done, they understood each other very well, they came back as friends, they came back as supportive allies, and the government was actually advocating to support the private sector by the time we were finished. And they were also advocating for, their, the government was also advocating for its own interests in being allowed more latitude to develop their rural economies. Most of these guys were from the province. So it's quite good. We, we use a term called relative deprivation. We want fee, people to go overseas and come back and feel deprived relative to their neighbors so that they are encouraged to grow their enterprises and become stronger and advocate for their interests and it works. And now we, uh, we have uh, 7,000 enterprises that we work with where we started, we couldn't hardly find any. And we work with about uh, 800 government officers um, in different, different uh, levels of government. Uh, we have had 35 instances now where the government has actually initiated discussions with the private sector before they write regulations so they get the regulations written for the private sector. And that's a big contrast to when we started in 2008, told by the government that they didn't need the private sector to give them any advice and they weren't interested in hearing from the private sector. So now we come to the point where they're actually inviting them to meetings. They're actually going to the province to have these meetings. So it's been very successful. 
And anyone is welcome before July 31st to come out and see the project and ride with my team. Um, we've got the greatest rural economic development team in the world, and you're welcome to go with them. You don't have to listen to me. And they'll, you can talk to them, you can talk to the private sector, you can talk to the public sector, and make your opinion yourself.